in Belarus so and uh, in last year I was so lucky and I visit Chukotka and uh, also I can uh, speak about it. Just to be a Chukotka where is it? Not everybody knows this. Is it is part of Belarus? Or no, no, it's uh, later, later. <laughs> I can speak about this later. So firstly, I I show our study place, so it's based on the south of Belarus uh, and Pripyat flood plain, so it's a huge area. Uh, during spring uh, it is a lot of water, uh, it stays about three months, so and it, it is a very nice place for waders exactly and other waterfalls birds, so it looks uh, like this uh, from helicopter. Uh, I think it's a wonderful, just, just, just to remind, if you think about uh, Hungary 200 years ago in spring, this is how it was, the, 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 the great plain. So for me, it was, it was just something what Europe lost. So the, the flood plains, and even England probably, huge, uh, these rivers had huge birds because of the rain and just flooded everywhere. But somehow uh, in, in Europe and Belarus uh, managed to remain somewhat. It's just wonderful, wonderful place. Yes, yes, because this place, uh, in, in some places it's uh, natural, but uh, in uh, some places it was drainaged uh, with them uh, and uh, with other communications. So <clears throat> this is directly our place. It's not so huge, but very nice. So in, uh, in total, so up to 600 hectares. So, and uh, we study waders uh, on this meadow, this meadow, and this meadow. But the main place, uh, this meadow near the Turov. So, and uh, we collected data uh, from 2003 till, till now. So uh, when the water level is high, uh, we have only small islands on this territory. Uh, this is the green one. So, and all birds uh, breed there. So, and, but everything is the water. It's around. So <clears throat> in, uh, in the beginning of, uh, uh, in 1999, so we organized a ringing station. It's the tour of the name is the tour of ringing station where we caught waders uh, every year, every season, spring and autumn season. So we cover whole migration uh, period um, with catching, and also we study waders. Uh, on these islands. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, our study place is the one known important area for migration waders and especially for rafts. Uh, every year, every spring, it's about uh, 5,000 uh, birds uh, roosting here, exactly uh, near the Turov uh, town. So, <coughs> And uh, now I, I speak about our breeding waders. Uh, so, uh, so we make nest searching, nest measurements, and mapping nest captures of adults, uh, ranged pools. Uh, we put nest cameras uh, for last three years, from 2020 till last year. So, and uh, we cover, uh, our study cover period from mid-March till uh, mid-June. Uh, so, this is whole breeding period of uh, the main weather species. So, this also some photos of our study. So, we put uh, nest cameras, uh, video cameras also, we fill protocols, uh, describe the nest, uh, floating tests, uh, so, and uh, ringing chicks. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we start to caught birds from 1999, and uh, we use uh, all three uh, methods of catching, uh, so it's the mist nets, uh, walking traps, uh, and um, uh, 
uh, traps on the nest. So, and uh, more than 14,000 waders were injured for this, for this period. So, and here <coughs> also it was a lot of uh, pools, especially in the beginning of our studies. So, at every year we ranged uh, 500 and more chicks uh, laughing, for example. But it was in the beginning of uh, our study in uh, 2005, uh, maybe till 2010. But after, after that, so it's uh, start to smaller and smaller number and so and uh, the main factor uh, on this territory is the water level so here are the dynamics of the water level by year year by year so and uh, you can see these two red lines uh, 400 this is a line uh, when the um, river flooded area so, and uh, the area start to su su suitable for breeding, for, for breeders, for, and uh, for all waders. So, but this line is a critical line uh, when um, settlements start to flood it also. So, it's uh, dangerous for people. <laughs> so, and um, we can see that some years, especially last years, uh, starting from 2014 uh, we have uh, a lot of years with a very very low water level so and also we have the critical uh, uh, the maximum year with water level as uh, 2013 and the last year also was very well very similar so and uh, uh, the rest uh, years, so in the between these lines. No, just, uh, let's just uh, looking at this year, 2019. Very interesting. So early in the season, very uh, early in the yeah, world. Yeah. And what happens? You know, they they will the, you yes. the spurs breed later, or yes, they start to breed later. They, oh, okay. they start to breed here, but uh -huh. then the water level start to grow up, and some nests uh, were flooded. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and then uh, in uh, in the beginning of June, so we have uh, the second wave of the mm -hmm. clutches. Mm -hmm. So, and in 2000, uh, in last year it was a similar situation, uh -huh. but earlier. So all nests were flooded, right. and, and then it was the second uh, phase. But it's uh, typical for prepatch floodplain, mm -hmm. uh, the second wave of the flood flooded. So, and here are the graphs, uh, you can see that the water level from year to year fall down uh, significantly. So, and this is a picture where the high water level from one point and uh, low water level. So, it's uh, during one season, it's uh, March. I, I, I think, and uh, this is May. So it's uh, different uh, pictures, uh, so and uh, different conditions for waders. So <coughs> we study waders from two thousand, from beginning of uh, two thousand. So and uh, I have uh, some dynamics uh, for common species like lapwing. So you can see, but uh, in different year, it was uh, di different numbers of the pair, pairs. So in uh, <coughs> red chunk, almost the same picture, but you can see in the beginning, it was uh, more than 150 pairs, but last year, so it was not so many. It's, uh, 500, uh, 50, and so in, it was up to 100 pairs. So very dramatically situation with um, common ringed plover, ringed plover. So this species uh, decrease, uh, totally decrease, almost from uh, 40 pairs uh, till uh, 
six, uh, up to ten pairs uh, in our territory, especially last ten years. The Erickson Piper uh, instinct <laughs> from our middle, so because in, in the beginning it was up to 30, 40 pairs uh, in the beginning of uh, 2000, but now uh, we uh, haven't any pair. Uh, last, last two years, no, no birds. So why is that? The water level? Or was the effort always the same across mm. all the years? Like, was it the same number of people, the same number of hours? Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yeah. the same. Yes, yes, the same effort, and uh, because it's, uh, it's the same study place, and it's yeah. not so big, so in it, because um, we're searching for nest, we're searching for breeding pairs, uh, mm -hmm. alarming, and also we caught waders uh, during uh, whole season uh, with traps and uh, with mist nets. Yeah. So, and uh, um, for in 2017, uh, we caught uh, in the traps about 14, 15 uh, birds, terps, but uh, any breed there. Mm -hmm. They just caught, mm -hmm. but not breed. Just visit uh, this uh, territory because uh, it's a fill of a tree, <laughs> so, but uh, not so good conditions. Uh, so were some, some of the birds uh, during previous years? Or yes, yes, no, yes. Really? Okay. We so caught the, uh, the oldest bird, uh, seventh, 17th years old. Oh, one more. Yes, it was uh, ranged as a pool. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting to see uh, whether if you have data on the nest location, it would be interesting to guess the habitat. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I and know, then, I know. So and then the just location. check why it was happening. But there is also a thing it's called social attraction. So not just the physical property of the nest, but they also, if the whole density or, or other show birds uh, uh, declining, they no longer stimulate it. Uh, to so there is a social component also. also. Yes, and this fish is very like uh, uh, um, garbage when the water starts to down and a lot of garbage uh, on the bank near the water. Uh -huh. So in, it was the first places uh, for terex and pipe. Uh -huh. So if uh, I found some plastic bottle, so it's possible to find uh, the nest of the terex and pipe. And so you mean rubbish? Yeah? Yes. Or like drift thing, like, yes. like pieces yes. that yes. because of the some river breaks? Of, yes, yeah. some pieces of plastics and uh, okay. packets. Uh, uh, bottles, uh, glass bottles, and plastic uh -huh. bottles. So it was. Uh, so it's a very easy solution. You have to dump a few hundred tons no, of rubbish. It was, and no, it's it was no. uh, very high level, but yeah. now, so, no. okay. so also overgrowing uh, and uh, other reasons. Yeah. So also. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. There is an oyster catcher, so it's not a big problem with uh, this bird because they breed uh, on the sand and uh, don't depend from water level, so it's so not critical for, for this. And also blood tail codlets, uh, they just uh, increased the uh, number for last years. So, and uh, it was uh, now it's a result from last three years um, when we obtained uh, during the uh, Elvenal project. So, it was in 2020, 86 nest, and uh, when the water level was high, it was more than 300 nests. So in 2022, only 60 nests. So also we caught uh, birds on the nests. So you can see in this table number of birds of, of these species. And uh, which year is this? Which year? 
it's whole. Whole oh. year, maybe um, without the data from last year. All right. So okay. I was, I quickly prepared the presentation because it was more than 60 slides. <laughs> so and maybe I forgot to put the last year. Yeah. So, and the uh, number of the nest where both parents uh, were caught. So, and oh. cheeks also with uh, data, with blood sample data. Uh, also, we put the nest cameras uh, for incubation process, so it was also not thousands of hours. And uh, about the breeding success of the weather on our, uh, our territory, so it's updated uh, in different years, uh, from 10 till 95%. And uh, here also, in, in compare, we can compare three years. So and, uh, we can see that different different picture of this year. Uh, 2020 it was not so good uh, year because it was very low water level and uh, it was very big area and it was impossible to pump any nest because uh, it's not so many birds and uh, hatched only 30 persons. But this was a COVID year, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, I think yeah. you, you were during it? Yes, or some, yes. Some we, start, we start uh, with our uh, now in 2019. 19, exactly. We start yeah. with Voita. Yes. Just yeah. like training camp. Yes, I remember. Yeah. Yes, and then and, yeah, uh, it yeah. was the first year of the Ovenal mm -hmm. project. So, in 2021, <sighs> the very good picture with uh, 75% and uh, 2044%. So, and uh, we analyzed it um, in 2020, we analyzed uh, uh, videos from, cam from nest cameras so, and uh, uh, we identified, but uh, this all data from uh, 2003 and it was like without cameras and uh, we just search nest so and uh, identify what the predators but sometimes it's impossible to identify so as now for my uh, opinion uh, maybe we made some mistakes uh, for example between uh, hedgehog and uh, american mink so because it's uh, the very similar uh, eggs uh, after, after this, this, this predators. So, so can you just go back? So it's essential what's happening. So, so we have the, the same, same problem pretty much in every project. How do you decide what is the nest? And, and I think at the end we convert, I'm not sure that knowing did we do it in like a, like a, like a protocol. So just have a photo and just say, look, if you see this, but that would, that would be the quantitative way of doing it. Instead yeah. of relying on a small number of experienced people who can say, look, I guess yeah. this is it, yes. I guess this is that. Yeah. For so 20 years, so we start to have more experience. Exactly. But I think the trouble <laughs> is that uh, uh, inexperienced volunteers also do that. They yes. have to. Yes. They have to. Yes, and then you end up with errors. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I agree. But sometimes if students uh, just look for the nest, so no eggs, uh, so it's empty. It's, uh, I don't know what happens. Yeah, but so it needs a protocol basically. Mm -hmm. But I think we do have a protocol, but not the predator item. I think yeah. I and myself work it out. Yeah. We'll have to decide in the field. Nest fate. Yeah, nest fate. Exactly. This is the same fate. Yes. related. But within the nest fate, we need an additional step, uh, which just says, look, if you see this and if you don't see that, do that. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's that's all doable, and this is where pretty much all projects uh, are going. More documentation, more documentation. Instead of just relying on uh, word of mouth, you know, some people are bigger mouth than others. Yeah. Word of mouth, you actually rely on written information. Yeah. I think anyway, we can discuss it. Not that. These are all 
But in the horse must be a uh, weird thing. Is it about the horse Horses? or what? No. Yes, because they, they uh, spend, grazing. they yeah. grazing and they spend during the night yeah. on oh. the islands. Mm -hmm. oh. So in the, in the morning I go for right. the nest, so I, to, I just saw that it was mm -hmm. trampled. It was... Okay. So, uh, the corvids are the main predators during early stage uh, of incubations, but uh, later, uh, when the terns start to breed uh, around, so these predators are uh, not sufficient. And uh, when we put nest cameras in 2020, so we identify <laughs> exactly uh, which of the predators uh, eaten our nests so, and it was uh, um, three red foxes, one dog, a hedgehog, uh, one white stork and Montebus harrier. Uh, but this during the day and uh, all of this during the night. Mm. You can see. But uh, this is, it was uh, one nest of the Derrickson Piper, it was the last nest. <laughs> After 2020, we didn't uh, search and find any nests of the Derrickson Piper in our territory. <laughs> it was epic fail <laughs> for us. So, and uh, all collected data will be analyzed and used for the Lunar project for global analysis and is the Tarakson Piper endangered? I can't remember whether it's red list. In the red list, uh, in Belarus, red list, yes. Yes, but, but not internationally. Uh, not internationally. Yeah. So, but uh, in, in the Belarus, uh, it's a not uh, native species. Right. Uh, uh, it's, uh, this species uh, uh, was started to breed in 1980s. Maybe oh, right. this okay. territory with okay. uh, ringed flower. So this is a complex, uh, uh -huh. tundra complex, and uh, okay. taiga complex. So and uh -huh. now I think it was 20 years uh, uh -huh. uh, with good numbers, uh -huh. but now so when succession and uh, other reasons, so, so but of course some of the yeah. uh, decline so, yeah. completely. Some some of these changes due, due to uh, the geography changes. So 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 there are our, you know the, the 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 grassland species are famous the black and pratinko. There is a population boom and then black and pratinkos flood uh, you know come and then it collapses. So some of these changes I'm just wondering that no, must be ways of separating. Yes, it. Has, it has one uh, pair of the pratinko. Oh, you see <laughs> which one? Which one? The, um, the black one or the red one? Black yeah. So Kazakhs export, is it? Yeah, Kazakhs export. Yeah, very good. Yeah. So, and uh, this is my first part. And the second part, Chukotka. Ah. <laughs> so, this is completely another territory. Uh, and uh, this is the most northeast region of the continent and the northeast point of the Russia. So, more than uh, uh, 80,000 80, kilometers from uh, Moscow. Uh, so it's uh, situated in Peninsula, Chukotsky Peninsula, with uh, such point, uh, those, the northern uh, point, uh, the eastern point. Uh, this is the uh, capital of the peninsula, in Chukotsky Peninsula, and uh, this is our study place main beginner. So, and uh, another, <laughs> this is the first city uh, when the day is begins in our continent. So, and uh, um, about the study place exactly. Uh, it's situated on the uh, South Chukotka. Um, on the, on the seashore, uh, this is a tundra landscape, and uh, 
the small uh, settlements is mainly Pilgina with uh, uh, local people, it's about uh, three and a half hundred people. And uh, most of them is Chukchi, not in the Russian. So, and uh, uh, what else? This is the Bering Sea, and here's the mountain. This is the mountains, uh, and uh, so we study only only this territory. It's about 10 kilometers to the right, and 10 or 15 kilometers to the left. So we use uh, uh, quadra cycles for for this, and. Uh, our expedition uh, was um, from end of May. We start with uh, 31 of May and finishing uh, in the middle of uh, July. So, so our team uh, in the monument uh, with uh, Spoonbills and Parker uh, near the, in, just in the tundra. So our leader was uh, Elena Lapo. So, and, uh, so other people, Anton Ivanov. So, you know. so and this is uh, our last day in Chukotka. And um, some people from uh, GIS team uh, join us and they uh, stay longer so than me, but uh, we just we depart. So, and this is a uh, Territory. This is the main uh, uh, place for endangered species of spoonbills and piper. And all expedition, the main uh, uh, goal of our expedition, of course, it was uh, monitoring of spoonbills and piper. So, and uh, parallel, uh, I work with uh, another species. So, but I prepare some slides about spoonbills and piper. So, because it very interesting information. So, it's, so uh, they study, um, Russian colleagues study this uh, species from 2006 or 2007 years. And then every year they start to monitor it, this place. Uh, and uh, also it was a um, head starting program, so they uh, collected eggs uh, and uh, incubated and then uh, storage in aviarium and uh, after this release uh, uh, chicks every year till uh, 2021. So now this program is stopped. So it was uh, uh, different reasons, uh, and especially to last year or so this, uh, this war. So it's impossible because the main persons who work with this program, uh, they go to the Japan, Japan and another country from Russia. So, so here I put the dynamic, uh, especially on, on this site, on the main Pilgina from 2003, uh, well, for last 20 years. So and you can see, um, uh, it was uh, the biggest number is uh, 45 pairs, and then start to decrease, and uh, this increasing, this uh, result of the head starting program when uh, the new chicks start to back to this territory and start to. So in this results of 2023, uh, we, in, in the total, we found uh, 30 birds uh, in two places. So the main monitoring area, we found eight, 18 birds. So, and other birds, it was in another place uh, when uh, our team used uh, the small plane just to reach that, that plane. So, so this is nice photo with flags. Uh, almost all pairs uh, have, have um, line flags. So, so. And 
uh, in total we found eight nests and one brood and region ringed only 14 bulls and two adults. So and now about uh, my results. So, but um, it was three key species. Uh, it was uh, common range of flower, lesser sun flower, and uh, Pacific golden flower. But the most numerous and most common uh, on this territory it was common range of flower. Uh, these two species uh, not so numerous, and uh, we found uh, not so many nests of lesser, lesser sun flower. And Common range flower, this is uh, one of the better uh, who breed here and uh, uh, use uh, another flyway. <coughs> All of waiters uh, which breed on Chukotka, they use Aust Australasiski uh, flat plane, but only common range flower uh, migrate to the Africa. So it was um, with rings and also it was transmitters, satellite transmitters results. So who did the satellite I mean, you did or your team or uh, Pavel Tomkovich with oh, really? colleagues okay. in previous so years so and uh, the yeah. case of paper. So it's also did a few uh, common ring uh, this year actually. Yeah. This year. Yeah this year, yeah in Sweden, yeah. Yeah but uh, uh, from this year we start to study more careful these species uh, but uh, in previous years it was like um, secondary step species when they study and search for spoonbills and piper they just look for the common range flowers so and, uh, maybe uh, <coughs> we found a lot of nests because of we search especially searching for this nest so uh, this is the distribution uh, of nests uh, from rich flower. So and in total we found 22 nests. And then we, when we searching for chicks, uh, I, we found 10 new broods. It was just just plus this number. So the total of nest must have been around 50. Right? Yes. Because of the, you calculate from that survival yes. and then many nests in survival. No, at, at least more than uh, 30. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it uh, ranged uh, 19 adults and uh, almost 50 adults. So, so we put nest cameras um, and so the next mm -hmm. piece is, is Pacific Golden mm -hmm. Flower. Uh, we found uh, this is a map of the distribution of the nests, and in total we found 20, 12 nests and ranged only one adult and five bulls. It was called uh, wood and one bull. So, but you can see that um, this this nest in the, in the mountains. They visited uh, once or twice because uh, it's a uh, not suitable place and uh, when my colleagues uh, looking for uh, spoonbills and piper, they found this nest and uh, we didn't control this nest so because it's uh, so far from our territory. So, and Photos near the nest <laughs> and uh, less a sunflower, it's Mongolian, Mongolian. Uh, so it also not so many nests, and uh, we found only uh, only two broods more than six nests. So I, I, I didn't 
willow bushes. So, and uh, we, uh, our bird life organization, uh, Tura Bringing Station, and all of our volunteers, and uh, also uh, my institute. So, we make uh, different projects with cutting willow yeah. every year. So, firstly, it was uh, with uh, volunteers, and uh, last three years, it was with machine, with special machine. Of course, the other problem with the willows that the crow is sitting on them. And then yes, you see where yes, the yes, are. yes. This and point. Very, uh, yes, you, yes, you well know from my, or yeah. they are very, very. And very from, uh, and uh, from 2014, uh, so cows start to graze, uh, graze in uh -huh. this territory. But it was period uh, without any cows, and uh, for this period the willow bushes start to overgrowing, and it was not so good places. And this is the reason when where the common ranged plover and terex and parp uh, decrease this num yes fall down. But common species like uh, lapwing and red shank, they still breed, but not in hundreds pair, but. 50, 80 yeah, pairs. I'm sure that a little bit of changing the management could, uh, could, uh, could maintain some level of breeding. Uh, uh, it, needs, it needs a bit, uh, it is probably a paper where we will need, need, to, uh, need to write at some point habitat preferences, what sort of habitat they like, and then try to maintain these sort of mm -hmm. habitats in different territory. Uh, not a trivial issue, mm -hmm. actually. Grazing, water level, predator density, that sort. But Terex and Piper start to breed uh, um, in the national park, uh, in oak flooded uh, uh, forests, ah, and also on, uh, on the, in the another bank of the Pripyat, not in the middle, uh -huh. but uh, uh -huh. on the sand uh, when the, some uh -huh. trees, uh, old trees. So it's very similar like in Russia, because oh, my yes. colleague from Gdansk University, uh, his uh, students study Terex and Piper in, mm -hmm. in our place, so but uh, not prepare the PhD, but just study. And uh, they, they go to the Ob, Ob River in, uh, mm -hmm. in Russia, and all nests they found on the trees, on the yeah. Not so big trees, shrubs. but uh, yeah, shrubs. shrubs. Oh, yes, yeah. but it was uh, completely different uh, mm -hmm. habitats, yeah. like in Turov, mm -hmm. because in Turov it was sand, garbage, and uh, grass. So sometimes it's possible to find a nest uh, when the grass like this. Mm. It's just oh, terex and pipe. <laughs> Yes, yes, I think or? yes, yes. They just looking for, 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 for their old places. So and then uh, pass to another place. I think. It's a good question. How would you answer your own question? Emma? Oops. Sorry? How would you answer your own question? Oops. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Actually, they have the data. You know what you do? You just have to see the sightings, the nesting from over years. And exactly. And what's the what's, what's the variable? And the, the fate of the nesting. Exactly. And then you look to see it. So this is the next paper you can write. You just ask uh, another time. <laughs> I think they do have they did have the data. You can play this actually with the uh, with, with distances, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay, we have uh, two more minutes. So anybody want to jump in? Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, maybe no, no, no yeah. questions, no. Okay. Yeah, get a lot, get a lot. Because a lot of okay. information. Okay. Yeah, no, I think it's a brilliant talk. Uh, so <laughs> last chance. Uh, so uh, so who has uh, has? Uh, we can have one or two more more questions. Yeah. Yeah, Susan, Did go you ahead. say, like similar to Helen's question, you said that often ringed birds won't go back to the nest, or they just stop incubating? Mm -hmm. So does that mean that the nest is likely to fail? 
I don't understand. So I ringing. Did. In which species cause ringing nest abandonment? I mean, that's the ah, in, uh, how, how in how Belarus how or in Chukotka? Yeah. In the second place. In, in, se in, in Russia. Lesser sand plow, ah, lesser sand mm -hmm. plow, and, uh, and no. Yeah, only so it, this species. It stops them going back to the yes. nest. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, like, if it's either that they go back to the nest and they survive there, so is it like good to continue ringing birds there, or is it likely to like There's another solution. It's called the human brain. You think <laughs> about it and you solve it. You know what's happening? Yeah. So if you think about it, one parent... One uh, parent. One Only parent one parent. You keep this in whatever car or cart bar they use for one hour. Oops. Hmm. So you basically, you replace the egg with a dummy egg, right? And you keep the... Yeah, you know, it's human yeah. brain. You think about it. And then, then when you finish the ringing, you actually take back the bird to the nest and swap back the ring. This is one possible solution, yeah? But you have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I think, and also, you read uh, what, whichever protocol we have, we limit the ringing of uh, mm -hmm. when wearing, uh, you know, we went through all of these uh, previously, the different species. I worked in a fall pond, very cold environment, and I saw that the birds just freezing, and the eggs can freeze, and chicks can freeze actually. Yeah. And then you instead yes. of just saying, yeah. "Well, my supervisor didn't tell me what to do, so I don't care," you actually try to solve it. Yeah. And then these are the steps you can solve it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's a good question. But in last year, uh, uh, nobody <laughs> abandoned nest. Which is good. Yeah, which is very yes, good. because yeah. we caught uh, just in the last days uh, before hatching. Okay, last shot, because I think the people were keen on moving to the next point on the agenda, i.e. drinking and eating and socializing. So last chance, yeah. No, I think it's a wonderful, yeah, wonderful, wonderful thing. So, good. yeah, last, last chance, I don't want to argue. <laughs> yeah, actually, please, yeah. You have data about biomimic mutations in the uh, island? Oh, what data? Sorry. Data oh. mutations? What, vegetation? I think, uh, as the author mentioned, Mito. Meto, I, I don't understand the word. Maybe not I do, but I, I don't. Meadow. Meadow. Oh, meadow. Meadow. Yeah, meadow. You have yeah. data also? On what sort of data? In yeah. Turov? Yeah, it's probably yeah, Turov. I think, yeah, yeah. Yes. You have data about vegetation? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. How, we how we how work about together about with the, our botanist, and a botanist mm -hmm. prepares a mm -hmm. map of vegetation mm -hmm. map of so what's the our idea? place. Right. No, what's the idea? Yeah, my idea how to calculate this data. How to calculate data about vegetations? This is my question. You can to uh, someone, uh, you can to uh, calculate the data about one species land by remote sensing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you're right, actually. It's a clever yeah. idea. I like that. I like yeah. that. Man. You can also do modeling, right? I know where you're coming from. So uh, if there are some habitat measurements data, you can actually uh, model the, 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 the vegetation actually grows, but unevenly because of uh, water level. But I think Natalia's team did, uh, do have some data on that. This is from the field. But you're right, you can get some additional data remote sensing. Yeah, he does a lot of uh, GI sort of thing. So you will do the paper this weekend, okay? Yeah. Very good. So many thanks. I uh, really appreciate you all coming. So uh, thank, thank you. Yeah, uh, last, last chance. <laughs> thank you very much. Well, thank you. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.